Mike and my stepdad were kind of like looking outside and Mike goes, oh my God, there's a tornado. <laughs> Can anybody hear me? Hey, I'm with the sheriff's office. We've got help on the way, okay? Just stay with me. Here in the Midwest, you have tornado warnings and you take cover all the time, but nothing ever comes of it. When it does, it's, it's unbelievable almost. This is Mike, Owen, Kinley, Bryson, and I'm Curry. Part of me felt like Something could happen, but no part of me thought that we wouldn't be safe. It was the beginning of March, which isn't technically tornado season. We decided we were gonna go up to see my parents for the weekend and my little brother Seth because they had recently moved to Iowa. So Friday, we explored the woods and rode bikes through the woods and drove the tractor around and just hung out as a family and played games and grilled and it was a beautiful day. And then Saturday we ate breakfast and then my mom and I played a game at the kitchen table while the kids were playing around the living room and the kitchen. And then we noticed it started to rain, so we were trying to gauge when to go see the alpacas at the, at the alpaca farm. And finally we saw like a break in the rain, so we're like, well, let's just leave the stuff where it is and we'll come back to it. So we left and went and fed the alpacas and went to the gift shop and Owen got like a little stuffed alpaca. And it was a really, it was a really fun time we noticed the weather was a little bit odd and they said there were, were chances of bad weather but there was no watch or warning at that point. And then they came out with a, a watch but there were no sirens or anything and so gauging on when to take cover versus just kind of hang out and just thinking it was a storm was hard. And we started looking around the house thinking like, where's going to be the best spot to take shelter if we need to. Um, and we decided the middle of the house under the big staircase in the pantry would be um, a safe place. But it, it, it wasn't like a for sure thing and there were still no sirens or anything. And so we're like, okay, you know, we can just go hang out in the pantry. and. Mike and my stepdad were kind of like looking outside and we were all in the pantry and Mike goes, oh my God, there's a tornado. <laughs> I guess Mike saw the trees start coming up. And um, so him and my stepdad basically just jumped into the pantry and I remember my stepdad saying, hold on guys. I guess we landed and you could just hear everybody just like crying and um, everybody was stuck and I was trying so hard to just push stuff off but nothing was moving. And then um, I heard Mike crying and saying, oh my God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> And um, I didn't hear Bryson. And my mom was behind me. 
and her arm was kind of over my shoulder with her phone in it and she said use my phone um, and Kinley was stuck between my legs and I couldn't, couldn't get her out <laughs> there was nothing I could do for her and then Owen was just beyond where I could reach with my one hand because my left hand was st stuck. And he wasn't there anymore. <laughs> I didn't feel any pain at that time. I would just I just felt horrible horrible because I knew my kids were gone and that my husband was gone. And then my mom said I can't do this anymore and I just felt like her chest breathing and her stomach breathing back and forth and then she stopped breathing. here and I'm fully conscious and I just I was afraid I didn't know what was gonna happen but then I heard Bryson and he said he was okay but his foot was stuck and so at that moment, I knew I had to get help because I didn't know where he was, but I knew he was safe. And maybe if I could get somebody to come to us, that maybe they could save him. Sheriff's office! You hear us? Hello? Do we, do they know we have people trapped? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey guys, we got help coming. I had to call 911 with my nose on my mom's phone because I only had one hand. We're gonna try to start getting you out, okay? Just hang tight. I kept trying to keep my little brother Seth calm because he didn't know what was going on. And he, he kept holding my mom's hand. I just remember all of her bracelets. Bryson kept asking, why can't I hear dad anymore? And I told him it's gonna be okay, buddy. Just keep breathing and people will come help us. And so eventually I heard voices and just started screaming for them to come find us. I got voices back here underneath all this. So and I just closed my eyes when they pulled them out because I didn't know what I was gonna see and I was too afraid to see anything. I just remember all the pain all at once and it was a lot but I just kept asking them to tell me when Bryson got out safe like I needed to know he was out safe um, and when they finally told me that he was out and he was okay that was like a huge relief to know at least at least I still had one of my family members still here. Bryson ended up with a sprained ankle. He had cuts on his leg and um, on his arm, and he had a black eye, but no broken bones. He somehow was underneath everybody, but 
something was able to cover him in a way that he didn't get stuck in there. It just doesn't make sense for people to lose their lives and then other people to just kind of, for a loss of words, just walk out. It just, I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. These were Owen's boots. They were very worn because he wore them every day. <laughs> but I like to keep them here so I can see them always. Kinley's boots weren't found. They, um, they didn't end up finding her boots. That was Owen's little alpaca that he got the day of the tornado. This was the draft that Owen had taken up to Mimi and Papa's house and after the tornado they found our dog laying with him. This is Kinley June going to her first day of school. That was her backpack from kindergarten and it has all of her stuff in it from kindergarten, including her yearbook. Her classmates all signed it for her. And they did um, a memory page for her. And as you can tell, she loved to dress however she felt good in. She had wigs and costumes. And then these two were super special because they were her Mimi's, so they were from the 60s. She loved to dress up. That was to go pick up brother and sister from school. Yep, there's Kinley. <laughs> she was fierce, but... I wasn't done being a mom to littles. And I've even thought, like, maybe one day I'll have more kids, but with great love comes great grief, and I don't know if I want to do that again. Friends and family brought in our family's ashes. That was the first time since everything that we got to hold them. And we cried so much, so we ended up falling asleep just like that. So this is my mom, her ashes, and a beautiful cross that someone sent for her. And here's Kinley, and just some of her things. And then Owen, and a lot of his little things. <clears throat> and then here's my husband, Mike. And then um, I got a bracelet and it came with a card that says, do what you can with what you have where you are. And that was, Mike was really big on like, it is what it is, we will get through this, and so I try to keep remembering that. Building a life with Mike and having our three kids, it was a dream. He was a talker. He talked to anybody and everybody, and I was always just there by his side. We had Bryson before we got married, and um, so Bryson was in our wedding. It was really sweet. Being a mom is my favorite. I love doing stuff with them. I love playing with them. It was wild, always, and I loved it that way. Um, the kids were usually all playing together. Mike and I actually were like, maybe one more. Um, but that didn't happen, and that was okay. She basically loves me, takes care of me, and hangs out with me, and a bunch more. Mm. I love you. <laughs> so being that my dad died right before I turned nine was the same for Bryson. It's very hard knowing that he did have those siblings that he was supposed to grow up with and 
have his dad there by his side to teach him all the things that I don't know how to do, how to do. And then one of the whole egg. Do you want to do the whole egg and I'll do the egg whites? Yeah. And I think that's why it hurts so much. But I am very blessed to have been able to experience that huge amount of love. I think like if it were the other way around and Mike made it and I did not, I would hope to God that he enjoyed life still and found things that made him happy and kept going because I would be so sad to see him just give up. We're just trying to find the balance in this new life and new beginnings looks like puppies. <laughs> Look, girl, bring it here. Oh, she lost. She never brings it back. We got two puppies last year, and they've already brought us so much joy and just kept us, kept us going. I mean, you have to take care of your puppies, so you have to get out of bed and you have to let them out and feed them, and they make you love them. <laughs> one of my friends um, actually lives across the street from me, and then I have one that lives right over there. Also, just spending more time with our friends. I mean, they're our family now. So, it's very important to us. There was so much love in our family. So much. <laughs>